Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Stewart. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, and it's Earth Day. I have a cool video for us to watch. I also gonna do a read aloud on an Earth Day story. We're gonna play a bump game, and I have a cool science experiment for us. So I hope you enjoy this video. Super Manny Cleans Up. Written by Kelly DiPiccio and illustrated by Stephanie Gregan. Super Manny Cleans Up. One thing I want you to notice about this story is the main character has a great imagination. So you'll see some pictures colored in like this, and those are the main characters. But when he is imagining something, it kind of shows like a light sketched picture in there. Can you see that? Not quite as dark and deep colored as this one. Every weekend, Manny and Gertie put on their capes and save the planet from danger. They wrangled stampeding dinosaurs at the museum. We are mighty. At the library, they tamed ferocious lions. We are awesome. They battled snapping, snarling veggie monsters at the farmer's market. We are tough. So you can see these guys aren't really there. That's just part of their imagination. And when an angry 12-foot-tall Yeti showed up at their backyard fort, Manny and Gertie found a way to calm the beast. We are smart. I am Super Manny. I am Super Gertie. There wasn't a monster or mobster in the universe this dynamic duo couldn't defeat. Manny and Gertie often fought their toughest battles at the city park. There they lassoed flying dragons. They reached peaceful agreements with the wicked Squirrel Queen and her army. They faced down a fleet of giant turtles from outer space. Wait! Manny ran over to his crime-fighting partner. We don't have time to wait, Gertie shouted back. If we don't defeat them now, we're going to be turtle food on Neptune. Manny pointed to the pond. Seriously, he said, look. Gertie lifted her goggles. Oh no, poor little guy, she said softly. And can you see that little guy right there? He has got a soda pop can, plastic container. One that holds the soda pops together stuck on his neck. Somebody littered. Look at the water. It's all polluted with trash. Manny and Gertie looked around and noticed there was trash scattered all over the park. Litter bugs, Manny announced angrily. He could see swarms of them everywhere now, perched in trees, hiding in flower beds, and darting across the playground. Everyone walked right past the empty bottles crumpled cups and plastic bags the litter bugs had left behind. How could they not see the trash too? Why didn't anyone care? Gertie's cape snapped in the wind. She looked at the turtle again and then she said the noblest, most important thing she could ever have said. We have to do something. Manny nodded in agreement. We are mighty, he reminded her. We are awesome and tough, Gertie added. And smart, awesome, tough, and smart, Gertie added. Manny and Gertie worked tirelessly that afternoon to clean up the park. Soon families and joggers and police officers and bike riders remembered they, were, they too were heroes and they pitched in to help. By sunset, the litter bugs had been defeated and the park was clean. There was more work ahead to be sure, but this battle had been won. The turtles were very grateful. Manny and Gertie were grateful too. Because every superhero needs a planet worth saving. 
the end. Okay, guys, so I want you to do a six point retelling with me on Super Manny. So here we go six point retelling. First one is the name of the book, Super Manny Cleans Up by Kelly DiPuccio. And the main character is Manny and Gertie. And they are pretending to be superheroes to save the planet. The problem is, one day when they're out in the park, they notice that there's litter everywhere. And the solution was they decided that the park needed to be cleaned up. Have to do something. And then once they started cleaning up, then everybody else started cleaning up. And then the park became cleaner again. The lesson in this story is even a small person can do something great to help the planet. And it, sometimes it only takes one person to make a change. Is there something that you can do around your environment, maybe your neighborhood or even in your house that can help save the planet? Maybe you can share that with me. Hey everybody, now I'm going to show you how to play a game called Bump. I'm going to have this resource available for you to print out from our school website. But if you don't have a printer, there's two different ways you can play the game. First, you can just get a blank piece of paper and you can draw it yourself. You can make 11 shapes. Today I'm just going to make circles just to represent the earth. I'm doing this really fast, but I want you to do a little bit neater, okay? And then we're going to write the numbers 2 through 12 in random spots. And you have your game board. You can also take a screenshot of this with your cell phone or your tablet and you can use the markup tool to write on it as well. So I'll give you a little hint on how to do that at the end here. So in order to play bump you need two dice and you need ten different colored markers of two different colors. So I have Legos here. You can use pennies and nickels, cereal pieces. You can even take pieces of paper and cut them up and make different shapes or colors out of them. But each person needs 10. The name of the game bump is telling you that you're going to do bumping these pieces off. So let me get these over here so they're not so noisy. You can roll a dice to see who goes first. So I'm playing against myself today so I'm just going to pretend that I already rolled my dice and then I'm going to go first. You roll the two dice and you add the numbers together. So one plus one is Two. So I'm going to find the box for this earth this time with two. I'm going to place my marker on it. The next person goes. Four. Four. And you keep playing until you get to a spot where somebody has the same number. Oh, here we go. Seven. The last time I, the first person or myself got seven, now the other person got seven. So if there's only one marker on here, you get to bump them off. Goodbye. You lost your chance. Now, if I was going to play this and I had both my yellow counters on here, this would mean that I got seven twice in two different rolls, and it's now locked. So if I were to roll seven again as the red player, I'm not allowed to bump this person off because there's already two on there, and that means the number's locked. Try not to cover up the number. It makes it a little bit more difficult to play when you can't see the numbers that are on there. So the winner of the game is the one who covers up all the markers with the most markers, or you can also play the last person that locks the last square as a winner as well. I know we played this game lots of different times in our classroom, so I hope you'll enjoy it. Now I'm going to show you how you can use this as a digital resource without having to print it out. So I have my tablet here. I just have my camera option open. And I'm going to take a picture of the page. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, there's my picture. Whoops. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> there's my picture. All right, now using the markup tool, I can hit edit. And then this little circle here with markup. And I can play the game by rolling the dice. And I can pick two different colors here. So I'm going to use this pen and I'm going to pick blue for me. So I'm going to go first and I'm going to put a little guy here. And then the next person, oh, I picked black. And the next person is going to pick green and put one here. Oh, wait a minute. I bumped you off. Erase it. And black. 
So I hope you see how you can do that. And this is a fun way to do any kind of resource without having to print it out. If you have questions on this, feel free to email me. Hi, everybody. I was just getting ready for one of my favorite days of the year, Earth Day. <laughs> Who's that for? The Earth, duh. It's the Earth's birthday. I almost couldn't fit all the candles on the cake. Earth Day isn't the Earth's birthday. It's not? Nope. Earth Day is a special day each year that reminds us that we must take care of the Earth. Well, the Earth is kind of huge. Don't we all have to take care of it? Who celebrates Earth Day? Well, Ricky, almost everybody. Let's go! Where? On an Earth Day world tour. First stop, Tokyo! In Tokyo, they celebrate Earth Day with the big festival in the streets. People come from all over Japan to celebrate the Earth and learn ways to go green. Go green? Like Shrek? No, silly. Going green means making changes to the way you live, some big and some small, in order to be kinder to your environment. Got it. Where to next? South Africa. In South Africa and many other countries, they call Earth Day Mother Earth Day to celebrate the relationship between us and the Earth. So Earth Day is still a huge party, <laughs> but it's more like Mother's Day. <laughs> in Brazil, you can adopt an acre of rainforest with a simple donation. Wow! In Hungary, everyone rides their bicycles. In Madagascar, they have a big carnival to celebrate the Earth's big day. In the U.S., lots of people go to the park and plant baby trees called saplings. What's wrong, Ricky? What am I supposed to do with all this cake? Oh, wait, I know. <coughs> Here's three things you or anyone can do to help keep the Earth clean and healthy. Number one, use a reusable water bottle to help reduce waste caused by plastic bottles. Well, that's easy. Number two, when you brush your teeth, turn the water off while you're brushing. You could save up to five whole gallons of water each day. That's a lot. And number three, turn the lights off whenever you leave a room to save energy. <coughs> and remember, like our friends around the world say, Mother Earth takes care of us. So we must take care of her. Look, Ma, I'm keeping it clean. <laughs> Looks like I won't ground you, Ricky. This time. <laughs> <laughs> How do people celebrate where you live? Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Here's our Earth Day science experiment. To do this experiment, you need food coloring. You need some blue Dawn dish detergent and a Q-tip. You also need a pie plate. I just have a larger casserole dish with curved edges and some milk. You need enough milk to kind of fill up the bottom of it. And this is going to be the clouds. Now we're going to add some drops of blue and green food coloring for our earth. So first we're going to add some blue for the water. And some green for the land. And here's where the magic happens. You take your dish soap on the Q-tip, make sure there's a lot on it, and you dip it in and you watch the magic happen. Ooh, look at that. It starts to make it stir around. Kind of get looks like the earth from a satellite view from way up high in the sky doesn't it next i want to talk about what happens if we had pollution to our planet pollution is anything that isn't naturally created on our earth and it can be unhealthy and causes problems in our environment so things like when we get packages in the mail or the exhaust fumes when we drive our vehicles or the trash that we eat at our restaurant the trash that people throw in the water these things can really harm our environment so this red is going to be an example of the pollution. So let's see what happens when we add some more soap. Oh, do you see how the pollution starts to spread? It doesn't really go away, does it? I move the bowl a little bit, it starts to spread even more. Look at that. So pollution can be really harmful to our environment. Maybe you can try this experiment at home and see what happens. Send me some videos or some photos through email or Facebook. I'd love to see the reactions that happen. Happy Earth Day!